Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Welcome! Welcome! This is Cut the Tape. In the year 2020, which means our show has now spanned over two decades. Tonight, being the first episode of the new year, I thought we would open... Knight Rider Becomes Robert. You know what, that seems a little silly. Let's not open that. What we should open is down here. Uh, uh. All right. This is the Mega Action Series MAS-02 Megatron. MAS-01 was Optimus Prime. This is officially licensed from Toy Alliance, standing at uh, 18 inches of pure action. 18 inches of pure Megatronic action. Or for our international viewers, uh, 48 centimeters. I gave my wife a couple options for Christmas gift, and this is the one she picked. So, it comes in this bag. I don't know if this bag was put on by Big Bad Toy Store, or if it came from the warehouse like this. I'm really not sure. But, um, I'm not too concerned about this bag. Let's take it out of the bag. Yay! All right, so, let's take a good look at this thing. It's a pretty big box. It's not a window box, although there is a little, oh! Oh! It's a slip case. Look at that. Oh, look at that. To our future viewers, uh, this is what we had before we had dust repellent paper. Look at that. It is a window box. And there's Megatron. And there's plastic covering him up inside so he doesn't get scuffed up. So... All right, so let's see. It's got a pretty long bio story here. Actually, it's got the regular Megatron bio, Peace Through Tyranny, pretty standard. Might be a variation of, of the original G1, but it's got a story here. Transformers, the Titans, Primus and Unicron battled in the far reaches of space for millennium, neither gaining an advantage over the other. Primus fought Unicron in order to keep Unicron from devouring all that he could claim, so that the new universe could thrive. At a key moment in the battle, Primus sacrificed himself for the greater good and sealed he and Unicron in a metallic rock forever. Over the eons, the two titans continue their fight mentally while encased in the planet. Eventually, the two being separated from each other, forming two distinct metal planets, each now a new form of being, the first Transformers. And it goes on. Primus gave of his essence and brought life to the metal on the surface. He created bots imbued with free will and freedom to do as they saw fit. These creatures were also granted the ability to have two forms in an echo of their creator's form. Over time, these new Transformers called their home Cybertron. Unicron used his newfound power to become a hulking metal monstrosity that fed on planets and radiates evil, always looking for an upper hand against his old enemy and the children of Primus, the Transformers. Over time, the rift formed between the children of Primus and a group calling themselves Decepticons thirsted for greater power. They sought to determine... To, pardon me. They, they sought to dominate all in their path. Only a few stood up to fight against their oppression, calling themselves Autobots. They fought for a free Cybertron. On rare occasions... 
has there been a peace on Cybertron, but most have lived with a civil war that has raged for centuries. In conclusion, the evil Decepticons seek to control and dominate all living beings that cross their path, including the Earth. An outnumbered group of heroic Autobots continue to fight valiantly against the Decepticons anywhere in their core belief that freedom is the right of all living beings everywhere. So, I wonder what the first two paragraphs of that story have to do with this figure. I mean, the last two really kind of explain, in a very broad sense, what a Decepticon is fighting for and why the Autobots are fighting them. All right, so it looks like the Megatron bio is just the G1 bio from reading it. Um, so that's a little weird. That's a bit weird. Why, why would that be on there like that? Look at that. Uh, I just want to compare. So the, uh, the slip case here, it's got a, breaks out a few features. He, uh, he lights up, he's got LEDs. He's got mega action. He's got a scope. Uh, I wonder if batteries are included. So, uh, the box. The box is very reminiscent of um, Combiner Wars. Uh, this is an older piece. I mean, not too old. Uh, when was this? Oh, 2017. All right. 2017. Got it for Christmas 2019. Okay. Let's cut the tape. I'd like to thank my wife for getting this for me. Whoops. So, you know, I was kind of expecting to have little robot points here. Maybe they're on the other side. Oh, that's tight. All right, that's tight. All right. Sometimes you have to cut the tape on both sides in order to relieve the pressure so that said package will slide out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut the tape. And the reason I'm doing that because I don't wanna create any creases here by like digging in or create any creases in this part of the packaging. So this is an expensive item. I, I wanna keep the packaging as nice as possible. And no, there's no robot points on the other side. See, you can just push it out like that. So of interest, check this out. A silica packet. Uh, you know how sometimes your car gets foggy when you turn your heat on or and it's like the winter and you got to wait for it to defrost something? If you put a silica packet right like on your front vents, um, it prevents that. There's a life hack for you. All right. So we have our Megatron. All right. 18 inches of Megatronic awesomeness. It's not taped down, which is fine. It is taped down on one side. Oddly enough, it's taped down on the side that you have to dig into. There we go. Oh, and it is taped on the other side, but. All right. Isn't that a great shot? You know, it's just brown. Here he is. So there's a uh, film cover here to protect it from the bubble so that there's no scuff marks, you know, which can tr happen. It's heavy. I think I do have to lay this down. All right, it's heavy. And no, this does not transform. 
And that's awesome. The head pops off. It's a simple ball joint for the head, a particularly small ball joint for the head. All right, let's put this over here. We'll come back to that, put everything back into the box. All right, so there's no zip ties. It's just a clamshell that keeps it in place. The head popped off. Um, it, it looks like pretty durable plastic, but it is a somewhat small ball joint. I see. You know, because that ball joint is on a joint itself, it's a little tricky to put it in place. So there's no instructions. Oh, there are instructions. There are instructions. Okay. There are instructions. All right, so first impressions before we get to the instructions. It's got a nice weight to it. I would say, I would say it's about eight pounds. Check that out. I think that is the biggest Megatron scope I've ever seen. I've got a few of the statues. This is definitely the biggest one. So I got a feeling it's gonna need batteries. Looks like it just slides into place. It would have been cool if this came with a sword, but you know what? It's really awesome the way it is. There's the back. That's pretty stable, it doesn't come out. We'll talk about articulation in a second. Um, looks like there's a Lucy foot here, but you know what, he's gonna, He's going to stand, so. Really simple to take off that chest. And there it is. I believe that's based off the design seen in Beast Wars in the final episode where they return Megatron's spark to his body. It's not a button. I don't know where any of the buttons are. So, looks like he's got some uh good articulation there in the legs but the arms seem a bit bulky so i wonder how much articulation is actually needed there all right uh back of the head there's a little uh um panel here for you to put batteries in doesn't look like it comes with batteries and there's no tabs that you pull out um yep on the side here yep this unscrews open for you to put a battery in so, yep, it shows you right there. Unscrew that, put battery. Light-filled LED. Unscrew, light-filled LED light-up weapon. Yeah, it's upside down and backwards to me. So pretty simple instructions. Don't even need to remove them out of the package. All right, let's see. We've got pretty articulated fingers. And it looks like there's a slot. But, oh, you know what? I happen to have this... I got this for my uh, Megatron. It's really small on, on this one though. You know what, this this guy needs like, like Fortress Maximus a sword or something. But see, it would be cooler with a sword. So it does look like he has slots in here, in his hand for a weapon to plug in. So I wonder if something was originally planned. He's got fully articulated, individually articulated fingers, which is great. I love that sound. That's quality. I mean, look at this. This is like a statue. You know, I think these are 175 on Big Bad. So we've got the torso posed. He's got 
doesn't have rocker feet. But you know what? This is kind of the, um, he's very top heavy. This is kind of the pose the hard hero statue had. And the Palisade statue kind of had a very similar pose. So, you know, the open hand, closed hand with the arm cannon. That's pretty good. This is great. I'm really happy with this. I think the Optimus is even cheaper. I think the Optimus was like 159. And I, I think there's a Nemesis one as well. Yeah. Okay, so I'm... Thumbs up. Highly recommend this. Uh, I wish the feet had a little more articulation, like if it had rocker feet. Um, other than that, it needs some batteries. Here's the button up top. It looks like it has uh, the type of trigger on the button where you can just press it down and it'll continuously stay lit. I don't know where on the head the button is to light up the eyes. Mm, I might have to get the instructions, although I don't like putting batteries in my toys because batteries do degrade over time. Wow, this is pretty good. Let's put a little, oh, let's put a little bot bot in there. Look, we got the little, Perfect. See that? See that? Look. Perfect. He's got the little sriracha sauce right there. Boom. Boom. That's exactly what we needed. That's why bot bots were made. So that the MS, MAS figures could hold them. It's got pretty good uh, paint in there. Um, I was a little confused because I thought this was the one where like panels come off and you see interiors. I guess that's a different figure. I, the chest does open up. Um, I just must've got it confused with, with a different figure. Doesn't look like anything else pops off. It's pretty solid and it's 18 inches. It's really, it's, it's, it's bulky. It's, you know, it's like a toned down Dreamwave Pat Lee style. Uh, I know I hate to say that name out loud, uh, but um, that's just kind of what it reminds me of. I mean, this makes a this makes for a great display piece. This is a great display piece. You can't go wrong with this. Highly recommend it. Uh, Toy Alliance Mega Action Series MAS02. We got to get the Optimus, and we got to have them side by side. So, um, hope everyone has a great New Year. Remember, there's always time to cut the tape, um, even if you're a little late. That's all right. Play with your stuff. Don't let anyone tell you. Don't open that. It's vintage. If you want to open it, you go ahead and open it. All right. Be nice to each other. Get your uh, dog spayed and neutered. Dogs and cats spayed and neutered. Okay. Bye.